Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. We're gonna paint this beast. Let's get started. All right, here we go. We're starting out with some shots outside while we're priming this guy up. Uh, a strange thing happens. It was a hot and muggy day that I was doing all of this. I just didn't realize that it was going to affect uh, the prime job the way that it did. So yeah, I primed this up uh, with a uh, brownish red to try to instill some rust right away. Uh, but if you notice here in these camera shots, the actual camera lens is fogging up. Um, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, I, I, of course, didn't realize what was happening, so I put the metallic spray right over the top of it. Um, and everything dried to a nice candy M&M shell. Um, it's hard to tell on this brown here, but when we get to the yellow a little later, uh, yeah, the airbrush coating that I'm putting on right here is, is beading uh, while I'm applying it. Um, it's really, really irritating the heck out of me while I'm doing it. Yeah, well, while you're looking at the yellow here, uh, yeah, you can see it it's beating right off. Um, just ridiculous. So, needless to say, I got pretty irritated and I did what I normally do. I went on a couple of discords and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, and I got irritated, vented a little bit, and uh, one of my uh, closer friends um, on the SubCity Radio Discord uh, from Scotland, uh, who does an awful lot of uh, sponging techniques, said, well, why don't you sponge some craft paint on there over the top and then go from there? Um, <laughs> brilliant idea. Thanks, Gaz. Um, yeah, so... Anyways, yeah, here I am. We're, we're sponging. Uh, this is cheaper, closer to color uh, acrylic paint. Uh, I, I, you know, I used to be really big on formulas and getting the same color and everything else. But as I my weathering on this uh, progressed, uh, I started not worrying about it so much. They they do totally look good. Uh, when you get everybody together um, so but needless to say uh, the brown was a lot lighter than I normally start with um, my original tile colors were Sigor brown um, and then I went over it with a uh, oh GW paint one of the one of the Sandusky uh, sands or something like that um, those were the original colors I had. So uh, basically, I took some umber ink here and I added some black to it uh, and pretty much got the tiles back to where I wanted to do in reverse order. Um, you know, my painting journey here uh, takes me down some very different corridors. Um, you have to adapt. It's one of the reasons I have so much junk. Um, I, I always save these things simply because you never know when you're going to have to use them. And here I am, you know, I, I had a candy coat shell, uh, you know, paint of this piece that I had done. 
uh, and we, we came back and we came back really well uh, in a totally different method. Um, so here we added some gray because I wanted to make sure that the uh, ferrocrete, I believe, uh, is the necromunda term for the for concrete. Um, I'm not sure why that they changed the name on it, other than probably a copyright infringement somewhere along the line. GW is a bit touchy. But um, yeah, I wanted to add that concrete look for the pillars and everything. So now, since the spray was beating so much, I wanted to do, well, I was kind of stuck brushing all of this on. Um, this candy coat worked in my favor on this step. Um, I started my, my original color on most of my pipes is flesh terror red over a silver. Um, normally I have to add effects on top of that to get this effect that we've got right now going on. Uh, the contrast paint was beating as I was putting it on and I just picked other flesh color contrast paints and I think I used snake bite leather for the brassy looks. Um, but this was very cool because uh, it basically beat it off um, and gave me a start of a chipping look. Um, so I just kept rolling with it. And you know, when you're, when you're in projects like this, it's a great learning experience. Um, you just gotta keep going. Um, you know, you're just putting paint on this the way it is anyways, and you're just going to keep putting more and more, you know, as long as you keep your layers thin, you can usually come back from mistakes. And now we're going to be going through some very sped up footage. Uh, yeah, I did not want this video to go much more than 15 to 18 minutes. And I think I actually came under that. Um, but yeah, the rest of this is just contrast uh, paint um, over the metallics that I pretty much left. Uh, like I said, it was, it was leaving a bead or a chipping. The chipping was happening all by itself. Uh, simply because the paint was beating off of the prime coat that I got stuck with. <laughs> but, you know, there goes to show you, you just keep ripping through and just keep adding paint. You don't have to highlight all the time. Um, you know, and I wasn't even at a stage at this point where I do highlight. Well, you know, so... Needless to say, uh, going for oils again. Uh, not a lot of footage on this. Uh, we're, we're, uh, you've seen me do plenty of oil paints at this stage, but what I am going to be doing is a new method because talking with Gaz, I got it kind of into my head that maybe I can sponge effects with oils. Now, Gaz is a fantastic sponge painter for terrain. Um, yeah, I, at some point I'm going to catch up to where he's at um, most likely not simply because I know what the difference is between mine and his and it has something to do with patience and attention to detail which <laughs> I always find it funny when people talk about how much detail I have on this and how little time I actually <laughs> spend on the detail simply because of the products I'm using and the methods that I do um, so I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to fan all this paint out and it's oil paint. You can probably see it there on the right side of the screen. Um, I simply got some rough cut sponges and did this sponge coat to it. Uh, it it's chipping uh, using sponge, but I'm using oil paint on this point. And I wanted to make sure that I kept it very, very thin so that it would dry uh, effectively. Um, adding the weathering powder sped this up. Uh, I actually got all of this pretty much straight oil paint to dry somewhat quickly uh, within a couple of days. Um, using the weathering powders here, trying to mimic uh, some of the cover art from the Necromunda books as far as that uh, Necromunda symbol goes. Um, yeah, we're getting to the end here. The final shots are going to be coming up and we're going to have a walkthrough with the new cameras from uh, Old Guard Games. 
Um, that's the Badger Games uh, home store in Milwaukee here that we've, uh, it's the new place that Jay and I are hanging out and trying to get a Necromunda community started up. Um, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we have pictures all the time and uh, I'll let you go through the walkthrough and then I'll be back towards the end. Okay, these final shots are looking pretty doggone good, and this is the first time for me using this camera. Thanks so much, you guys, for stopping by, and as always, please like and subscribe.